Hey guys, welcome back. Today I want to get you started with the very first and most important drum beat you will ever learn. The basic 4-4 beat is a must know. You will find variations of it in practically every song you hear. It is the main structure to basically all the beats you will learn. I want to also explain the counting and reading of musical patterns in easy to understand musical terms. Also, a brief explanation on how to hold your drumsticks properly. Everything you need to know to get started on your way to drumming excellence. First, I want to show you the most common ways to hold your drumsticks. First is the traditional, which you'll notice in a lot of parades and marching bands. You hold them like this. Next is like a match grip, which is holding them like this in your hands. It's more for power, playing rock. Sometimes you'll see them doing a combination like this. A lot of jazz players will play like that. When you're playing like that with your left hand, you get a lot more finesse on the snare or certain little detailed rolls. Um, you want to always play with your wrists, not your arms. You don't want this motion. It's just in the wrists. Also, your fingers, you want to find a good balance point, a pivot point called a fulcrum. Um, just kind of mess with it. If you get too far back, you don't have a lot of control. You get too far forward, obviously there's not a lot. Just kind of work with it. It's, for me, it's about, you know, a third of the way up from the butt, the butt end of the stick. Um, just wanted to be able to relax in your hand. The other thing is to play relaxed. Sit up straight, play relaxed. The next thing is to learn to count the beats within a measure. I recently just started teaching my six-year-old granddaughter how to play and explain it to her. Um, musical terms, I was trying to explain four quarters as a dollar, which she understood. Uh, also on a ruler at school, four quarter marks equals an inch. And likewise, if you times those quarter marks by two, that'll get you to your eighths times that by two, get you to your sixteenths. Um, all those marks would be the top marks on a bar line, which would be your hi-hat, which is keeping time. Um, the next thing is, it's really important, especially when you first start out, to maybe get yourself a metronome. These are fairly cheap, this is like a $10 deal. Uh, there's many different ones. Some that'll have a little dial on it that'll show you when it's hitting. Some of them will have a blinking light. This one will actually have audible sounds. So we are going to set the metronome at 60 beats per minute. This first beat is probably the most important drum beat you'll ever learn. It's the basic beat that um, all the other beats stem from. Um, it's probably going to be the hardest one for you to learn, even though it's the easiest, just because the first part of doing anything when you're first learning, training your body, your mind to react to what you're trying to, to accomplish, um, getting the coordination, but I promise you within, some people might pick it up like really quick, other people it might take a while. Regardless, however long this takes, make sure to get it down. Um, without this, really there's nothing else. And if you listen to this drum beat and you start really listening to all the songs on the radio, or all your favorite songs. This beat is the main part of all of them, or at least variations of it. The tempos may vary. There may be little variances in the kicks or the snare drums, which I'll show you some different variances um, on a different lesson. But for now, I just want to start at 60 beats per minute. And you really want to learn how to count these off it's going to be valuable for you in the future to, to have this counting going on in your head. So the first thing we're going to do is just count to four on the hi-hat. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So 
simple enough. So, um, four beats per measure, four measures equals a phrase. That's the standard for a four, four beat. When people say a four, four beat, you'll know what they're talking about now. Next, we're gonna add a kick drum on the one beat. So, four on the hi-hat, one on the kick. Two, three, four. kick three on the snare it'll sound like this It seems a little monotonous, I know. Uh, the more you count, get that down. Then we'll move on to the next one, which is basically the same thing. We'll hit the kick on one, snare on three, but we're gonna do eighth notes on the hi-hat. So the count on that is one and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and. Simple enough, you're doing great. Um, so the third example is taking those eighth notes, doubling those to sixteenth notes, and the count would be one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Kick on one, snare on three. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a. One handed, one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. Simple enough. This beat, I really do want to stop here with this one for this video. Um, it is that important. It's the the major major beat. Uh, I can't stress it enough. If you don't get this down, you're not going to progress like you need to. Uh, take all the time you need to get it down right, get it feeling good, get it feeling comfortable. And from there, I mean, you'll progress fairly quick. I mean, everything from here on out is going to stem from what you're learning right now. Uh, I hope you have fun practicing, and I recommend a half hour to an hour a day. Consistency pays off. Get yourself into a routine and come back for the next lesson when we will expand on what you have learned. Please like and subscribe and share with anybody else that may benefit from this. Um, leave any kind of comments or suggestions for future topics. Thanks again. See you next time. Hi guys, I want to share a little story about the importance of practice and preparedness. So we had already opened several shows for Poison's frontman, Brett Michaels, when on this particular show night, we had a 45 minute set that we had meticulously worked out. From intro to dialogue between songs, to segues and key points during the show. All went well and we ended with our finale. Brett's crew on the side of the stage motioned for us to do another song. So obviously we were thinking, cool, we got an encore. So we finished that song and they were motioning to keep going. About three songs later, we realized something else was going on. Anyone who knows Brett's history knows he has had a long battle with diabetes and other health problems. Apparently, he was too sick to go on stage. So we ended up playing an additional 45 minutes, double our standard set time. 
playing many songs we hadn't done in years and really nervous about performing them in front of a huge crowd at a really upscale venue. Luckily for us, we pulled them off fairly well. Eventually, Brett did make it to the stage and sounded awesome. I doubt anyone in the audience ever knew how sick he really was. As he was near the end of his show, he picked up his acoustic guitar to start the intro to Every Rose Has Its Thorn, probably one of his best well-known songs. He strummed the intro, and just as he got to the beginning lyrics, he stopped the song. He kind of looked around at the crowd. The crowd was wondering what was going on. He then said, you know, I just needed to take a moment to thank our opening act, Perfect Disorder. Well, he went on, but my mind kind of went fuzzy, not believing what I just heard. He thanked us and everyone was high-fiving us, pat patting us on the back. Anyway, I tell this story to demonstrate the importance of practice and preparedness of the music as within my band, but also years in practice and discipline shown by Brett to perform while being very ill and still being professional. I recommend practicing a half hour to hour every day. Consistency pays off.